Like these, there's like campers and trailers just... Are you afraid she's gonna get away? Yeah, so you see a rooster just on top of that barrel? A lot of times. Yeah, well, yeah, these horses, some of these are all, a lot of them are breeders here. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll breed those fighting birds. Are you gonna have the, the dogs? The neighborhood the here. Farm, um, they, to treat the bird the I don't see any people. There's a, you know, like makeshift home and whatnot. I'm only seeing it. Hey, the guy we were detaining is now a custody, and we have pushed to the giant oak tree on the, uh, Yesterday was the culmination of a months long investigation uh, in which uh, detectives from my bureau uh, who specialize in blood sport, a animal blood sport crimes, uh, culminated a search warrant in which we knew there was a, a location that had a large scale uh, cockfighting uh, rooster operation. Uh, the search warrant was served yesterday and it was up in the unincorporated, unincorporated area of Valverde, which is in the northern part of Los Angeles County, uh, near Santa Clarita. As a result of the search warrant, in excess of 7,000 birds were located and seized. Uh, this, according to the experts here, is the largest seizure in U.S. history of illegal cockfighting roosters. Um, the majority of the birds were the types of roosters that are commonly used in cockfighting. Uh, the property where the search warrant was served was very large and in a remote location in a canyon. Um, several pieces of evidence were recovered which were indicative of an illegal cockfighting operation. This included mobile fighting pits, uh, and, and the rings that they use to, to have the roosters fight with each other. Um, hundreds of gaffs or slashers, what these are, and we have some examples up front, are uh, they actually uh, uh, put them on the rooster's claws so when they do these uh, uh, fights, they, they literally slash each other to death. Uh, we also found syringes and steroids, and uh, what, what these uh, people do is they inject the roosters with steroids to enhance their fighting ability. Uh, we also found evidence of recent cockfights at that location as we found several dead roosters with uh, wounds uh, consistent with cockfighting, slashing wounds and, and, and those types of things. At this time, we, we detained approximately 10 people at the scene. Uh, most of the detainees were, were more the lower level, the caretakers, the, the, the people that were uh, again, entrusted with uh, feeding and, and caring for the animals uh, at the scene. We have identified the property owner, and he is the primary suspect uh, in the case. Uh, the investigation is ongoing, and we anticipate to make several arrests uh, in relation with this case. <laughs> Cockfighting involves two roosters being forced to fight to the death, often with at least one or both birds dying a violent, agonizing death. The activity still exists as a serious problem throughout the country with cockfighting events where tens of thousands of dollars in unreported income are wagered and exchanged hands through illegal bird sales. Yeah. I think you're going to try to scum and build me right
So Sheriff McDonald um, and his team um, wanted to make a clear message of the fact that animal fighting in blood sport is cruel, it's inhumane, and it's against the law. And the Sheriff's Department will work with our service partners, Animal Care and Control, SPC of LA and Humane Society to ensure that our animals are safe and that this cruel and inhumane blood sport and animal fighting is stopped in Los Angeles County. For years, uh, when I first started, I worked in an undercover capacity. I've attended well over 100 cockfights across the country, um, over 500 arrests and convictions uh, based on those uh, operations. Um, the fights, the knife styles of fights are particularly bloody. Uh, there are several types of implements on the table up here. The type that look like curved ice picks, those are called gaffs, and they're worn on both legs of both birds. Uh, the shorter implements that look like a scythe or a knife are actually referred to as Mexican slashers or short knives. Uh, those types of implements and the longer knife uh, uh, are only attached to the bird's left leg. Uh, in those events, there's typically a time limit of 10 to 15 minutes at the end of. Uh, it's not unusual for one or both birds to be dead. Uh, it's only the last bird that attacks its opponent that we, we is, a, is a winner. Uh, the gaff styles of fighting, uh, where the implement again looks like a curved ice pick, the bird is being stabbed uh, repeatedly to the chest area. Um, most of the time the damage is done to the chest area. It's not unusual to hear a bird start to uh, vomit up or regurgitate blood. Um, the sound of which is a rattling noise, and you'll hear spectators around the arena saying that bird's rattled, and you'll see the betting odds change very quickly. Uh, that's also where we see some of these bizarre behaviors with cockfighters during a handle. If they've got a bird that's rattled, they know it's going to die. But if, if there is a handle called by the referee, you'll often see these guys put the bird's head in their mouth and suck the blood out of the bird's throat uh, because that may buy the bird a few extra seconds of breathing to be able to attack its opponent and win the fight. Uh, it's not unusual for us to find live birds thrown in dead pits or in burn barrels at the, res at the end of these events. Um, those are felonies, and California is a felony state. It takes a second or subsequent conviction to do it. But if we have mutilation occurring on the birds, if we have birds being thrown into burn barrels alive or being buried alive, which is very frequent, we can charge felonies as well. So uh, this is an extremely bloodthirsty type of activity. It dates back thousands of years. Um, it's not unique to any particular culture, contrary to pu public belief, no more than it was uh, very popular in colonial America uh, up until the uh, 18th century. So um, it's just an activity that's out there. There's a lot of money involved, a lot of opportunity for money to be made, very low risk of being caught. Um, not going to pay a tax consequence unless you're caught and somebody turns you over to Franchise Tax Board or IRS. Uh, most of the money that's made is pillow money or mattress money. Um, so it's a very difficult type of, of crime to go after. It's extremely lucrative. Uh, birds at the very lowest end, single Gamecocks, again, at the very lowest end, will sell for between $75 and $150. More often, when we go online to some cockfighting websites, you'll see these birds selling uh, for 250 on up to $1,000. In some cases, for birds that come from uh, cockfighters who have a, a widely known reputation uh, for winning, uh, their birds will go well into four figures. Um, when they're selling uh, birds, they're often selling across state lines in violation of federal law. Also, sometimes they're selling to other countries, uh, also in violation of federal law. Those are federal felonies to move any animal in interstate or foreign commerce for fighting purposes. For those of you who don't realize, this is also a big operation. Marsha, we had one where they actually had a giant food truck and amusements for the kids pulling in um, to serve tacos. So the kid thing really bothers me too. But for those of you who actually can't picture what a cockfight looks like, uh, unfortunately, I've, like Eric, have soul-searing images of, of being at cockfights. Um, how does, most people ask, how, did the, how does the chest get hurt? So let me just give you the, you know, the nursery school 
thing, the reason the cocks are tied up on those barrels and the reason they're taking steroids is because they're building up their power and their ability to jump. And why? Well, they're just not fighting this way. But for those of you who know what a jump kick is, do you know? I mean, I can't, okay. So a jump kick, right? So what happens is the, we can do a jump kick on one leg and kick, in martial arts, kick high with our other leg and then hit somebody in the neck or the face or the chest. What the birds do is they lift themselves up with, together and then both legs can go. So they can actually do a series of those and that's how they're slashing this way, which is how the blood starts to you know, pool in their throats and stuff. So if you can picture that, that's, that's how they get up so high and that's why the steroids and the exercise of jumping up and down the barrels is so important for them because it builds up their ability to have endurance and to be able to sustain those kicks throughout the fight.